this is John Cola with OKRaw.com. Today I have another exciting episode for you. And you know, this video is going to share some of my passions with you. Number one, traveling. Before I was even into raw foods, I loved to travel and see new places. So what I'm going to do in this video is uh, combine traveling with raw foods. I mean, I got into raw foods after I started travel. And some people might think, man, if you're raw, you can't travel because you don't got your kitchen equipment, man. You can't get raw foods. How are you going to eat, right? Bull honk, you could totally travel and eat raw at the same time. It's totally fun, exciting, and you know, open yourself up to new experiences and more importantly, new foods. You can do it, and I'm gonna show you guys how. So that's why I got this video here, and you know, you guys are gonna have a good time. You guys are gonna learn a lot of stuff, so be sure to take some notes in this. And I guess without further ado, let's just get into the video. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is John Kohler, and today I'll be giving a presentation on some of the different uh, juicers that I offer at my website, discountjuicers.com. You guys will all look a bit puzzled. Actually, I'm giving a talk today on traveling, but the plants are definitely part of my traveling talk. Um, <laughs> I'll catch you guys off guard there. Um, but yeah, I'll be talking about appliances also in a little bit. For many of you guys that don't know, I did have a little handout. If some of you didn't get one, I have a few left. It basically has my websites, which are a wealth of information on there. I'm going to just take one and pass it down. Um, my website's all list. For those of you guys that didn't get a handout, it's very simple. OKRaw.com is the number one website. Letter O, letter K, raw. I have over, I don't know, 200 videos that teach about my raw and plant-based lifestyle, how to do it, how to save money at doing it, and really practical information that can help people, including actually a whole bunch of videos on traveling. When I'm actually traveling, like I make a really cool video at the airport with my friend Kailash explaining like, how he does it a little bit differently than me, and we're both raw. I mean, I have my ways, I like to do it, and he has his ways, which is both cool, you know, but I've been staying in hotels and making food, and you know, just whether I'm on the road, like this is a road trip for me. I drove out from Las Vegas, and with the whole car full of stuff that I'll share with you. Uh, there's so many different ways to do it. So yeah, that's on my OK Raw channel, a lot of stuff. And then the other channel that I'm really into these days is actually called growingyourgreens.com. And that's where I teach people how to grow their own food at home. I've converted my front yard into growing 90 to 95% of my vegetables uh, year round. And, and I encourage people to grow their own nutrient dense foods uh, in compost and rock dust that literally money can't buy foods of this quality, especially when you pick it and taste it or pick it and bring it inside and make a salad instantly out of it. You're, you're losing very little nutrition. I mean, within 24 hours up to 50% of certain nutrients can be lost. And you know, I've truly learned after living on the raw and living foods diet for 18 years now, that this is the, truly the end game. I always strive to increase and better what I'm doing and to increase the quality of my diet. I couldn't really eat anything healthier than fruits and vegetables, but what I could do is change the quality of the fruits and vegetables that I was eating by growing them myself. So that's on growingyourgreens.com. Another website I have, many of you guys may have been there, it's rawfoods.com. I started this actually back when I got into raw foods, back in like 1995. I got into raw foods in 97. I made a website, rawfoods.com, which hasn't changed much over the years, which is a good thing because a lot of the information I learned back then without a lot of the different superfoods, because literally superfoods, things like raw cacao, did not even come into existence into the raw foods lifestyle into, in, since, you know, like maybe the 1990s, you know, late 90s. And so these are foods now that we're consuming in mass quantities that never before in history have been consumed in such large quantities. But guess what was around during that time? Fruits and vegetables. And that, in my opinion, should be the mainstay of your raw foods lifestyle. Uh, in addition, another website I have is discountjuicers.com, which is where I offer the appliances that will allow you to eat more fruits and vegetables and get them into your diet. Because a lot of people might have just a problem, you know, picking and eating apples or eating a head of kale or whatever, but the juicers can concentrate that nutrition into just a little bit of juice that you could drink and get the nutrition from your foods. Let's get into today's topic, because I know that's what you guys are here for. And uh, today's topic is staying raw while traveling. You know, as I just mentioned, I've been into the raw foods lifestyle for 18 years now, and even before I got into raw foods, I really love to travel. And you might think, John, how can you stay raw when you travel? Some of the places I've traveled to is like Cyprus, that was an amazing trip. I've been to things like Fiji, Iceland, stayed all raw in Iceland, uh, Europe, and one of my latest trips out of the country because I've, I constantly travel in the country. Those of you that follow my videos, it's like, oh yeah, John was in Milwaukee this weekend and he's <laughs> over in LA now. And, but, um, so I travel a lot in the country. But my last uh, trip out of the country was Korea. So actually I've made, because I started making videos, I don't know, probably about three years ago, 
now pretty much my life is my video diary. So if I'm doing Korea, I'm going to make videos about Korea, how I traveled raw and stayed raw in Korea, and actually have a few videos on what I ate in Korea. And yes, they have organic food there. Yeah. And it has a funny little label in Korean that you can't read, but they have cool symbols that you can decode. And I, I have the explanation in my video because I had a translator uh, with me in Korea at that point. So that was really fun. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's really easy to be raw wherever you are. But what I would encourage you guys first, before you want to travel raw, you want to live the raw foods lifestyle in your daily life. Because if you're not living it on a daily basis, then you, you know, you're just not going to be able to travel raw and do it as well. And I think that's very important. So yeah, all over. And the, you know, the one thing, if you don't remember anything else from this talk, that's going to be packed full of information for you guys. The one thing that you have to remember is what I'm going to tell you guys next. The one most important thing to stay raw while you're traveling is that you need to change your reality. Change your reality. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you know, always as kids, when we were kids, like, my family would take road trips, and we would get in a car, and, you know, we would drive to somewhere, and then, you know, if we're going somewhere and we're not at home, where are we going to stay at? A hotel, or actually, most of the time, we stayed at motels. We weren't that rich. We stayed at motels, and when you're at the motel, right, and back in, in that day, they didn't really even have all these sweet hotels that had refrigerators and stuff built in. It was just two beds and maybe a coffee maker if you're lucky. And, you know, there's always that hotel restaurant. Like, they have one here. Or there's the Motel 6, and there's the Denny's right next door, or the McDonald's next door. So when I was a kid, right, we travel, and it's just logical, right? I mean, when you travel, you don't, you can't, you don't bring your kitchen with you, right? Where are you going to eat food? you got to go to the restaurant. So most people to this day, even many of the people staying here, are eating at the restaurant because even around this hotel, there's not really any restaurants you can even walk to. So, you know, that was my reality one growing up. And even, you know, many people have that reality today. You go and stay at a hotel, you got to eat at a restaurant because you can't make your food with you. That's the number one thing you need to change. You know, when you travel, you need to now know that you don't need to eat at restaurants. Even if they're raw food restaurants, even if they're not raw restaurants, you know, that, that's not your best option in my opinion. Now, if you do want to eat at a restaurant, I will have some hints and tips on eating at a restaurant in just a, a minute to guide you through that process. But that's the number one reality change is, you know, do not think that you have to eat at a restaurant. You know, you got to think more like a raw foodist would think or think like John Kohler would think. Well, what would John do in this situation? <laughs> WWJD, that's not what would Jesus do, that's what would John do? What would John do if he was traveling? Well, wait, John doesn't have his front yard garden, what is he going to do? Well. If you're like me, the day I left for this trip, I was actually in my garden and I picked one and a half pounds of leafy greens that I just finished actually last night. So Joe would want to eat his food first, even if traveling, even if it's not fresh picked, because it's far better than anything else you could buy. After that, what would I do? Well, I'd like to maybe wild forage some things if I know the right things that can be harvested and eaten and it was a safe location to do so. Aside from that, I would like to visit you know, farms and pick my food fresh from the farm or buy it fresh from the farm. That's not possible. I might want to go to a farmer's market and learn about the farmer's markets in the area. I do an annual trip down to Anaheim and actually I schedule my trip to get in on Thursday morning because Thursday morning is the Anaheim downtown farmer's market. And then, you know, once I, I get off the airplane, drive to the farmer's market, load up, I might have to also stop at a health food store, which is another resource, of course, eat out of health food stores buy your produce at health food stores. And then if there's no health food stores wherever you're going, like in Iceland, well, there's a few health food stores I visited, but they didn't have much organic produce there, and it was super expensive. So that trip, you know, I mean, I got, I got to say, like, oh, man, I blew it that trip. I ate, like, bananas and tomatoes, non-organic. Actually, they're hothouse-grown tomatoes in Iceland because they used, like, the, the hot water from the springs to heat greenhouses to grow stuff. So I was, like, eating mostly non-organic but raw. And, you know, you got to take some compromise if you're in other parts of the country sometimes. So, yeah, you could always eat out of grocery stores, because they'll always have, most of them anyways, have some produce, at least something you could eat, right? And once again, the, the produce is the majority of our diet. You want to seek out and find new produce items you can eat and enjoy. So, yeah, that's pretty simple. So, that, that's what you want to do. You want to uh, research before you leave. So, you know, get on Google, type Farmer's Market Cincinnati, if you're going to Cincinnati, Ohio, or wherever. And you'll find them. One of the coolest places I like to go, and I go every year usually, and I'm actually going back in April, is South Florida. On South Florida, you know, I get, get on this uh, website, localharvest.org, and Local Harvest actually has that. Actually, that's good if you live in an area, too. You can find your local farms 
that may sell direct. So actually last trip to South Florida, got on local harvest, found a, found a farmer that sold papayas directly to the people, and he let me go out to his farm and pick my own papayas off the tree. And they're insanely inexpensive. I wish he was growing in more rock dust and nutrient dense soil so they tasted better, but nonetheless, they are fresher than most papayas I've gotten and a little bit better than the stores anyways. And I made a great video, phenomenal video out there of the work he's doing with, you know, saving heirloom, evergle evergreen, everglades tomatoes, which are small little tomatoes. If you live in South Florida, they're a perennial tomato crop that you could just plant once and it'll keep coming back and produce pretty much all year. So that was really, not, that was really fun too. So I always, I mean, I just, my life is just about having fun, finding out new food and fresh food and eating it and, and just sharing that with everybody on my YouTube channels. Another website you can use, actually, that I use in South Florida, it's really valuable, is Craigslist.org. Believe it or not, I buy my food on Craigslist when I travel sometimes. This isn't always possible if you're going to, you know, New York City in the wintertime. You're probably not going to find a lot of lo local grown foods in New York City. But in South Florida, last trip, a couple trips ago, actually, I got fresh jackfruit, 80 cents a pound on Craigslist. Wow. I went to the lady's house. She had them. She had the big trees. I saw them. She'd already harvested them because it's the end of the season. And I got to pick out all the fresh jackfruit I wanted for 80 cents a pound. Nice. That stuff was super good. Actually, another, another trip a couple times ago, I actually got um, sapotes. I got the mame sapotes. So the, those are really good. They taste like pumpkin pie, those pumpkin pie fruits. I have a question on Craigslist. What do you look under food? I didn't so yeah, so just go to Craigslist and they have a search. And I just put in search for organic. Or, or sometimes I'll do that and I'll see all the organic. And yeah, there might be organic eggs and stuff. But sometimes it'll be like organic fruit. Then I'll do another search for fruit. Sometimes I'll do a search for plants if I want to see if anybody's selling plant starts that I could like bring back on the airline with me and grow them in my garden to you know have a wider diversity of foods or whatever. So yeah, use the search tool, it's very handy. But yeah, so that, those are my choices. That's how like I get some of the fresh produce. And plus, I mean, you can't go to a, most stores or even produce shops in South Florida. They don't sell jackfruit. It's very hard to find if you can find it at all. So and plus, buying it directly from the person that grew it. I mean, that's that's the best. So another thing, a tip I want to give you guys, actually, if I'm traveling, and for the most part, when I travel on the airplane, I take, uh, you know, no more than my carry-ons. Um, so I have this roller bag, which, you know, depending on what airline I usually fly, like American or whatever, they let you have, you know, one carry-on bag that'll fit in the overhead like this, and a backpack. So I have a pretty huge backpack that's probably pushing the size limits. And uh, I'll have this guy, and that's all I travel with. I don't like to check luggage, because it could get lost, it could get stolen, I mean, you, then you, you just got to get off the plane and wait for your luggage, and it, it costs extra money in many cases as well. Uh, lately, I've actually been flying Spirit Airlines. How many people have flown Spirit or know Spirit Airlines? Wow, only a couple. Well, they're the ultra-low-cost carrier, and uh, I joined their program. It's like $59 a, a year, and you get access to special low-priced fares. And Spirit Airlines, how they work is they have super low prices, but they charge you up the yin for everything. Like, if you want to carry on one bag like this, it's another 25 bucks. If you want to check a bag, it's another 35 bucks. If you want to, you know, get a seat that's, you know, you, you get that you assign to yourself is another 10 bucks. It's crazy. <clears throat> but the deal of the $59 program that I joined is it'll give you fare sales. So believe it or not, they have $9.90 fare sales that you could fly for $9.90 plus tax. So just earlier this week, actually, they had a fare sale because I'm in their special program. I'm, I'm flying round trip to Miami or Fort Lauderdale, Florida. $9.90 one way plus $10 tax. So round trip is 40 bucks. Oh, Las Lord. Vegas, Florida, round trip. But I only get to carry one backpack unless I want to pay extra. So Do they go to Europe? They don't go to Europe. <laughs> they just fly around the United States and unfortunately they're only in some larger cities. You know, Las Vegas, fortunately enough, is a, a pretty big hub. Another trip I'm doing, I'm actually going to go visit uh, Chris, Christina Curlo Bucaram in, uh, in Texas there. Woo! Yeah, next, next month, yeah. actually. Or no, in April. Uh, and that was, once again, same price $9.90 plus $10 tax. Now, these sales are far and few in between, and they only have a few seats that they open up. But in general, you know, it, it's, I think it's definitely a good deal if you want to travel more, especially for a low cost. I, d I do also want to say that a lot of the places that I visited, like Iceland, I flew from Ice to Iceland for less than $100 round trip. I flew to Fiji, I think that was around $100 round trip too. Wow. Costa Rica, I flew for 250 round trip. Yeah, so I, I travel because I, I like 
One of the things I like to do besides raw foods is find really good deals on stuff. <laughs> <laughs> whatever it is, if it's my produce or whatever, I like to find good deals. So there's this website that I'll mention to you guys real quick. It's called Flyer Talk, F L Y E R T A L K dot com, Flyer Talk dot com. And you want to go to their forum section, and it's called the Mileage Run Forum. So what this website is for is for people that are crazy about traveling and like stocking up airline miles, which I've collected quite a few myself. And that, like we're into raw foods, they're into like airline traveling, and they're like the experts. So like I learned from these guys, and when they find a good deal, they post it on this mileage run forum because the, what the goal of the mileage run forum is to uh, share with other people deals where you could pay a low price to get to somewhere, but rack up a lot of miles that you can then redeem for free trips. So every time I fly, I get more miles, which then gets me more free trips. And it's just kind of like a uh, never-ending bad, you know, trip. <laughs> <laughs> or a good trip. So yeah, so that's how I found out. Now, the sales, because these are like airline sales. If sometimes I bought them and then the airlines don't, you know, um, would accept them or say, oh, that was a mistake. We're not honoring it. But a lot of these I, I've gotten, gotten on and I've gone to. My Korea trip was a pretty good deal, a $650 round trip from San Francisco. Normally it's around 1000 So I mean that's still a good value. Plus, I've always wanted to go to Korea to visit some of the manufacturers of the juicers I sell. So I got to visit some of the manufacturers that actually made videos in their you know, uh, production warehouses and facilities to show how the machines are made. That was a, definitely a fun trip. Another thing I want to t touch on real quick before I go is because I travel with a backpack and a roller, you know, I don't often bring bowls or things like that with me. And that can be a huge issue, especially if you're staying at a place like the Hilton. You know, I'll go down to the restaurant there and ask them, can I have a large bowl? <laughs> and their large bowls are a freaking joke, man. It's like a little plate. It's like, how am I supposed to eat, like, you know, three quarters of a pound of salad greens on your little plate? That's because people eat concentrated foods that are high in calories but low in nutrients. I'm eating foods that are high in nutrients but low in calories, so it takes a lot more to get my fill. So... You know, I'm traveling by car this time, so I'd like to bring these bowls, actually, because these bowls were inexpensive at a restaurant supply house. Uh, these are like the bowls you used to get at the pizza place when you, you know, eat salads for the whole family, I think. <laughs> but this is actually just a little bit too small for me for my average salad, but still they're pretty good. And these are like three bucks. You know, you can drop them and stuff, and they're really durable and very inexpensive. So if I'm traveling by car, I bring these, but if I'm not traveling by car, I don't bring these. But what I do instead is I'll go to the uh, bakery section of a, of a supermarket, you know, like, you know, where they got the bakeries and they make those pies with the big domes. Because I, I had this issue, I'm like, okay, sometimes I buy the salad greens and the one pound tote, you know, the little, you know, plastic things. And that's actually my bowl. I buy the one pound salad, maybe dump some sauce on top of it, and just eat it out of there. And that's, that's a good salad. I'll talk about a few recipes I like to make. But if I have my own greens and I'm buying bunch greens that's not in a little container, because most of the times those container salads are a lot more expensive per pound than a bunch of greens or some bok choy that I'd rather eat instead, what I do is I go to the bakery. And I'm not buying a cake, <laughs> but what I am getting, I'm going to go ask the people there, hey, can I have one of those big domes that you put the cakes in so they don't get mushed? Because guess what? If you turn that dome upside down, what is it? Oh. It's a large bowl, the largest bowl I can find for free. <laughs> free 99, because that's very important to me, you know, I'm trying to live in free, free and cheap and eat healthy. So yeah, I'm remember that too. So the next thing I want to share with you guys is actually eating out at restaurants. So in my opinion, you know, once I, I, I gave the example before, we want to try to eat out of wild foods, farms, Farmers markets, health food stores, and then supermarkets. That's the chain of command. I'm going to try to do the best one first. If you can't, and there's absolutely nothing else, and I still don't recommend this, you could eat at a restaurant, especially a regular restaurant, because number one, what they're serving is not organic. Most places, restaurants are not plant based or vegan eateries, and there may be cross contamination. If you're freaked out about that, I was raised as a germaphobe, and to this day, I still want to touch the door handles in the bathrooms. It kind of sucks. But uh, <laughs> so I don't like that cross contamination stuff. So, but whatever, you know. So, um, but if you do need to eat at a restaurant, you know some of the things you can use, some of the tips you can use to get your way or to make sure you get good, uh, fresh, plant-based foods. Number one is the substitution principle. So you know, so if they have you know an avocado and the whatever I don't know avocado lettuce tomato sandwich. You know they got avocados, but none of their salads have avocados on it. 
order the salad with the chicken and say, hey, instead of the chicken, I see you guys have avocados on their sandwiches. Can you take out the chicken and put in the avocados? And then you're going to have a salad with the avocados without the chicken, and then you'll be able to eat something. So you can always substitute and play around with their menu. That, in most cases, is going to be a lot easier than saying, you know, having them make something special for you, because it, it's going to be a pain in the ass. Another <laughs> tip that's really easy to, to do, to, that's going to guarantee you get your way at the, at the restaurant, number one, we have to remember the servers are there to serve you, right? And, uh, and keep you pleased, because they want a tip, right? Every, every server, I mean, they, they don't make a lot of money by the hour, but they make their money on the tips. So what if you walk into the restaurant, you sit down, and they give you the menu, and you just whip out 10 bucks. Here, I want to tip you in advance because I know you're going to give me excellent service and give me everything I need today. Dude, if you were a server, somebody just gave you 10 bucks, like, shit, I made my money. I'm cool. These people are going to get their stuff. They just already tipped me. So, yeah, and then you could say, hey, you know, I'm on a special diet, and this is the next thing you say. The next thing you say when, you're take, when you're, they're going to take your order, all you got to preface your order with is three simple words. Write this down. My doctor says. My doctor says I need to eat a salad with, with you know, um, no meat, no cheese, no, you know, fats. I, all, all he says I need to eat is fruits and vegetables. If it's not a fruit or vegetable, I, I can't eat it. You preface it by that because guess what? In our culture, the doctor's orders are the rule. They're the law, man. Everybody follows it. Some options for eating at restaurants, you have to eat at a standard restaurant. One of the things I like the most is places with salad bars. At least then you could see what it is. It's probably not organic, but at least you could serve yourself what you could get. And a lot of times those places, many of them anyways, or buffets, are all you could eat. So you could go out as many times as you want and keep eating a salad or whatever. Another place that I like sometimes is Mexican restaurants. You could get a good salad, and most Mexican restaurants will make a guacamole or pico de gallo. So if I just have like a nice salad with some guacamole on top and some pico de gallo, I'm actually quite happy. That being said, I rarely eat out of restaurants anymore. <laughs> Another thing you can do, obviously, when researching where you're traveling to, find out if they have a raw food restaurant. But I still don't necessarily recommend eating there. Because a lot of the raw food restaurants are not the way that WWJD would want you to do it. Because <laughs> I would not eat necessarily at a raw food restaurant. Now, I do make a few re videos here and there when I travel on restaurant reviews, let you guys know how it is and give you my opinions on the place. That's about the only time I eat out. <laughs> but um, in general, you'll find a lot of raw food restaurants are not eating the way I would want you guys to eat. I want you guys to eat high water content foods, uh, the majority of your diet of leafy green vegetables and fruits with you know very little nuts and seeds. For example, I eat one or two handfuls a day of nuts or seeds max. If I eat more than that, I'm like consuming significantly more than 25% of my calories from fats. I don't use any extracted oils, like I will never or rarely ever make an olive oil vinegar dressing, can't remember the last time I've done that, because olive oil or any other kind of processed oil, once again, that's a processed food, it's not a whole food, hopefully you got into raw foods via whole foods, so people just go directly from standard American diet to raw foods, and they miss the whole foods aspect, which I believe is very important. The oil is 100% fat, it's 120 calories per tablespoon, that's a lot of calories, I mean you can eat one banana, this is a smaller banana, but a regular sized banana is probably about 100 calories. You can eat one whole banana, and that's still less calories than one tablespoon of oil. Most people will take their big head of, you know, romaine lettuce and put some oil and vinegar, and you're probably using more than one tablespoon of oil in your oil and vinegar dressing. Now you're eating more calories from fat than even is in your romaine lettuce, because in a whole nice head of romaine is less than 100 calories. So we want our calories coming from the nutrient-dense foods. Once again, lettuce, lettuces, leafy greens, vegetables, and fruits, in my opinion. So let's talk about appliances and gadgets to bring to make travel easier. So the, the first thing is, you know, what you're going to bring depends on where you're going and how you're traveling. For instance, I traveled in my car this trip, and I wouldn't have to bring all these unless I was doing a talk about it. But... Um, <laughs> But this trip, I actually brought what's in this suitcase here, and this is, once again, this is my carry-on size suitcase, and I could carry all these items on if I needed to. As you can see, <laughs> I don't wear clothes, that's why I've been wearing the same clothes for the last three days now. I just bring my stuff, my equipment, dude, is more important. Actually, I brought another suitcase with my clothes, but sometimes if I'm traveling, like by airplane, I'll bring one appliance and my clothes packed around it to use as the padding. And I actually have a really good video on YouTube showing how I do that, actually. So what I brought today, or what I brought this trip is actually a blender. 
And here's a tip for you guys that are cheapskates like I am. <laughs> Even though I sell Vitamixes and I encourage you guys to buy the Vitamix Turbo Blend VS from me at discountjuices.com. If you can't afford it or don't want to, you can get a Vitamix Craft. And these guys actually are the cheapest at Costco when they have a Costco Roadshow. I know they're maybe like around, I don't know, they still run around 100 bucks. But you, what you want to get is this guy. You want to get a Jack LaLanne Health Master 100 Blender. These guys are no longer made. And these guys really sucked when they came out because guess what? The motor's really good, and I could actually rebuild them if I need to because I know how to do that. <laughs> but the part that's bad is the craft, the bearings on the craft because this is a cheap, you know, blender made in China, not like the Vitamix made in the USA. Once again, you guys get what you pay for. But uh, the, the crafts on these are notorious for blowing out the bearings and leaking all this black shit in your, in your blended smoothie, and it's not cool. But the motors are fairly solid, especially if you know how to replace the little fusible link in there, and you could clean the brushes, which a lot of guys in here might know how to do. It's pretty easy. Um, <laughs> but nonetheless, you can find these on eBay sometimes for about 50 bucks. So check this out. Fits on there perfect. So now, guess what? I got a Vitamix. No, no, seriously. I got a Vitamix for about a, less than 150 bucks. And this motor is almost as powerful as a Vitamix. Unfortunately, these are not, no longer made. So you can find them on eBay. They come up every once in a while. But so even if you have a Vitamix at home and you don't want to like, I'm not traveling with my $400 Vitamix. It's fine. Just take your craft and buy one of these things. And you know, this thing's all dented and chip it up. I'm not going to be like bringing my Vitamix and getting that all damaged. But I don't care about this $50 thing that I can rebuild if I have to. <laughs> Seriously. So yeah, so this trip I brought my, my Vitamix like blender. You're, you're, you're Jack. Jack Mix. Yeah. Jack Mullane. Yeah, now no other blender, you know, no other, like they have a Mont. This company actually now makes the Montel Williams blender, but the Vitamix Craft will not fit on that. So you've got to get this particular one. The next thing I brought on this trip was my Omega Vert juicer. So I like the Omega Vert juicer because it's a pretty much, you know, it takes a low footprint, low counter space. It's fairly heavy, so carrying on if you're, if they're weighing your bags, and if you're usually going to Europe, they weigh your bags, but otherwise, on domestic U.S. flights, I've never had them weigh my bags, especially the carry-on, although you do have a carry-on limit, and with this, with my other stuff, usually exceeds the carry-on limit. So the main thing is, when I roll it on the airplane, and I lift it up, I've got to make it, make it look like I'm a strong, raw vegan. I can pick it up and just shove it in the thing without like, oh, it's so heavy because it's overweight, and then they like, like, hey, that's overweight, you got to check it and pay 50 bucks. No. <laughs> God, I'm not paying 50 bucks, man. I'm making it look like it's light because I'm strong. Well, I'm pretty strong. Man. Actually, my strength to weight ratio for a guy, you know, for those of you guys that know bodybuilding, strength to weight ratio, I'm fairly strong for my size. You don't really need to be all big and buff to be strong, really. So, yeah, so I brought the Omega Vert that allows me to make juice, and actually that's how I made my, I'm drinking pineapple orange juice right now. So do they never question you as you go through? So in general, the juicer's fine. This juicer, 100% of the time, no problem. Occasionally on the Vitamix, depending on the TSA person, they might get kind of wigged out because of the blade. Uh, yeah. This blade is kind of like non-removable, but in general, if I'm bringing the blender, you know, I'll usually check it. If I, if I have to bring a blender. That being said, I'd rather bring the juicer anyways, in most cases. And the funny thing is, is that if you're bringing your blender, your blender can juice. Did you guys know that? You could blend up things in the blender, then pour it through a nut milk bag that I also travel with that's in the bag, and strain it out. That, in my opinion, will make you juice, but in my opinion, it's also a very bad idea. It's not optimal because this, the blender, you know, the Vitamix blender, runs at 37,000 RPMs, running very fast. People like Brian Clement say 99% of nutrition is lost after blending because it's Basically, every time the vortex sucks in, running at 37,000 RPM, it's sucking more oxygen into the, into the mixture that may be oxidizing, or probably is oxidizing, the food in there. And then you're just going to strain out the, uh, the pulp. The other hand, on the juicer, the juicer, this juicer runs at 80 RPMs. So 80 RPMs and 37,000 RPMs. I'm not a math whiz or anything, but it's significantly <laughs> less RPMs. So that's going to basically oxidize your food significantly less. Now, if you want to use your juicer as a blender, because you guys can do that as well, you're going to just run whatever you're, you're running through the machine, and the pulp's going to come out, and the juice is going to come out. Guess what? Mix them together. 
And I actually have a really good video actually when I was in Chicago last year making what I call a ground salad using actually this machine here, the Omega 8006 that actually comes with a blank plate that combines it for you so you don't have to actually take the two separate ones and combine it yourself. So that way, because I didn't have a blender, I wanted to like make a blended salad, but I couldn't do it. So I make a ground, a ground salad, and the ground salad is actually superior to a blended salad because once again, it's running at 80 RPMs instead of 37,000. It's not adding the air to my food, which may give you extra gas. And it's kind of fun. This machine is uh, basically really good at juicing the hard vegetables, and it'll do some leaves if you want to do the majority of leafy greens, and I still recommend this. You know, this is my favorite one just because it's a lot easier to use, and there's pros and cons to every juicer. I have over 300 videos on YouTube uh, going over each style and in detail comparing like how much yield this would make with that with leafy greens. And you can see, and I do the play-by-play -play on those. Um, so yeah, that's what I brought. Those are the two appliances I brought this trip because I was traveling by car. Uh, let's see here. So yeah, so on the airplane I might just bring like one thing and it depends on my trip. Like if I'm just going for a short weekend, you know, I don't need to waste space and bring an appliance. You know, I could just eat raw food that is found in nature and use your best juices of all. And yes, I'm talking to you guys out of buying a juicer if you guys use one of your nature-given tools effectively. What's that? Teeth. 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 Thank you, everyone. You guys are smart. Maybe I should go home now. <laughs> your teeth. Your teeth are the best juices on earth, not the ones that I can sell you if you, you don't want to use your teeth. But the problem is most people don't use their teeth. I'll sit across my dad eating dinner, and he makes me nervous when I'm sitting across from him eating because he'll take a salad, and thank God I got him on a 30-day water fast at True North Health Center in Pengrove, California at the time. They're now in Santa Rosa, California. And uh, he fasted for 30 days on water, lost a bunch of weight, but more importantly than just the water fast, which was phenomenal in itself, was that the doctors there uh, retaught him the right way to eat, which is what I was teaching him all these years, but he wouldn't listen, but he'd listen to these doctors at True North Health jamming to him that, you know, animal products are not a healthy thing to eat and he needs a removal from his diet. So since that time, he's been probably like 99% uh, vegan and plant-based and he eats a lot of salads, but the problem is even if he's eating salads, he's taking his spring mix and I wish he would get some more nutrient-dense greens, like maybe baby kales, for instance. He takes a bite, chews it literally three times and swallows. You know, last night my dinner literally took, I watched a movie on HBO last night, <laughs> just relaxing after my day. And literally the movie was like, I don't know, two hours. By the time the movie was done, I was done with my salad. And it was like, it was three quarters of a pound of greens with a, like, a, let's see, orange juice nut dressing blended up. So, you know, I literally chew, 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 and we want to use our juicers and grind up our food like baby food. That's why we give babies baby food, because they don't got no teeth to chew. But if you're not chewing your every mouthful into baby food, you're not getting optimal digestion or breakdown of your food, and that's where the machines come into play. But yeah, I don't have any problem using my teeth really well to masticate my food into a mush, because I don't have too many better things to do. <laughs> Just kidding on that. I like multitasking, it's very important. So uh, let's see, some other appliances to bring uh, during your trip, very important. If you're traveling by car, even with by airplane, what I like to do, and let me move some of these guys out the way here. I like to bring what's called a thermoelectric cooler. And I love the power of YouTube, because actually I made a video on this device, which is at Walmart. Anybody see that video by chance? Well, I got some dedicated viewers here, I love that. So I made a video in Walmart to show people what this is because I often talk about it and don't often, you know, show it when I'm giving a talk. But what this is, this is like a cooler. Many people know these standard coolers. Yeah, John, you got to fill them up with ice. They leak their pain in the ass. They get your leafy greens all wet and anything you put in there, it's all now in water. No, this one uses no ice. I like that a lot. What it does use, it uses a 12-volt power supply. It has a special thermoelectric cooler, which is a kind of cooling technology it'll cool down like 32 degrees below the ambient air temperature where you are. The other thing that's really cool is that it'll actually heat up hotter than 32 degrees if you want to heat your food up. I don't recommend that. There's a little plug. If you put the plug in backwards, it heats. If you put it in the right way with the uh, blue one, it cools. One time it kind of sucked. I actually cooked my food in this. It didn't get that hot, but I had to eat that food relatively quickly. So yeah, you just plug this in one way and cool. The other way it heats. And check this out, this thing will plug in your cigarette lighter. The one thing I want to caution you is don't leave this overnight in your cigarette lighter plug in your car when you're staying at a hotel. Because guess what will happen the next day? 
no battery, you're not going AAA. <laughs> so not fun. So uh, what they do if you buy this at certain places, like, not that I recommend buying things at Walmart, but if it's going to get you to eat more raw foods on the road, I definitely recommend it. Um, at Walmart, they'll also give you with that this guy. What this guy does is you can plug this into the wall, plug this in like your cigarette lighter, and now you can use this in your hotel room. So actually, I brought this into the hotel room here because I was staying here, and I plugged this in. Instead of using the fridge in the hotel room, I use that for extra stuff because the problem with fridges in the hotel room, sometimes they may be set too cold or too warm. And actually, I know somebody here that actually went to the you know, uh, health food store in town, bought $200 worth of produce. They came here, put it in the fridge, and they didn't check the thermostat on there. They woke up the next day, and it was all frozen. That's not cool. So anyways, I probably remember other place safe than sorry, bring this into the hotel. So number one, always check your temperature before putting stuff into fridge hotels because guess what? Most people aren't putting their fresh fruits and vegetables in there. They're putting beers and Cokes and other crap that I don't recommend you guys drink to keep it really cold and chilled or whatever. So yeah. So yeah, these guys run about $90 at Walmart. I actually recently just saw a smaller version of this at Costco. So some Costco's may sell a smaller version. I like this one for traveling on the road. I think this, I took this on the plane once and checked this in. I don't necessarily recommend it. <laughs> Another um, thermoelectric cooler is like this style. So this style I got from the Sharper Image when, before they went bankrupt. And uh, <laughs> they don't make this anymore. It's very unfortunate. But this is a small version of the same thing that has a little plug right here that I could plug in. Right here. And this one's really cool because this also plugs in your car, but this one actually folds flat. If it wasn't full right now, I'd fold it flat, and it'll fit in my carry-on bag. So I can keep my produce cold, you know, when I'm traveling on the, by airplane. So that's really cool, too. And then plus I got this cool handy-dandy foldable ceramic knife. These are pretty rare. Because I don't like using metal on my food. They let you take that knife. This is not carry. This is not acceptable on the airplanes. <laughs> Do not. I mean, while it won't, may not show up on the scanner, if you get caught with this, you might go to jail. <laughs> but this is traveling by car. This kid. But I will show you in a little bit some knives that I do take on the airplane. No problem. <laughs> kind of trick for all this stuff, man. I've been through the ringer on this stuff. Trust me. So let's see. So thermoelectric cooler, very handy to bring, depending on the size. You know, I mean, this trip I brought two of the coolers. I've had the juices in that small one, and then we had this in the back, just full of produce. We're almost empty now. <laughs> so the next thing you may want to travel with is a blender. So you could, you know, you could bring one of those small portable blenders, like a Tribest Personal Blender or a Magic Bullet Blender. But you know, I, I brought one of those small blenders once on a cruise ship, on Easy Cruise, when I cruise the Caribbean, and that was cool. I unplugged it into a little cabin, and I was making coconut banana smoothies on the cruise ship. I don't particularly like the small blenders. I'd rather bring make a larger blender because those cup sizes just don't hold enough for me. Also, the blades are not powerful enough to fully fractionate everything to the consistency that I would desire to get the optimal you know, digestion out of it. That being said, if you do have to travel with one of those small style blenders, the one I would recommend, not that I'm recommending it, is the Nutribullet. And I do have a video comparing the Vitamix to the Nutribullet on YouTube if you're, uh, you you know, want to see the differences. There is a difference. But it's good for travel, nonetheless. It's a good small blender for travel. But I would rather bring my full-on Vitamix. Even if, they also have a Vitamix with a 32-ounce carafe. If you don't want to take a big carafe with you, it's 32 ounces. They also make a 48-ounce carafe. So that's going to be a little bit shorter. <coughs> Another blender I have experimented with, because I get this question a lot, and trust me, I've tried to find all these cool products to try, because I need to use it myself, but also to let people know my experiences. I tried this hand crate blender, because it doesn't take any electricity. Now, I brought it with me to Fiji. So that was like pretty cool, bringing this blender to Fiji so I could crank out blender smoothies in my hotel room when I stayed at the Denaru Sheraton. And the day that I walked into the Denaru Sheraton to check in was my lucky day. You guys know why? You guys probably know it, yeah. They were trimming the coconut trees that day. So I got there, I check in, they're trimming the coconut trees, they drop all the coconuts on the ground, they left them out overnight, and then they were going to pick them up with a little cart and get rid of them the next day. I'm like... Free food! <laughs> so I emptied out my entire bag. I rolled out there with two of our carry ons. And at night, I'm like looking around, dumping coconuts in the bag, put it back, chip it up, and then just roll it back. That's my hotel. Unloaded, go out for no load! So I had co fresh coconuts off the tree that whole trip. <sighs> that was really cool, man. I get off on coconuts.
Come to us one of my favorite foods. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. So I have this hand crank blender, so I'm putting the, like the coconut water, the coconut meat, and some bananas, cranking it in. Snap! It's like, man, this thing broke, dude. I'm only a raw food, I'm not even a bodybuilder. What's up? So, anyways, this 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 GSI hand crank blender is made for people that want to do like margaritas on a tailgate party, not for heavy raw foods. Blend of coconuts and coconut meat and bananas. So, yeah. I don't recommend it. Oh, another trip tip that I have used before. Last time I went to Germany, right? Because I'm like, okay, I'm not bringing that hand crank blender. One of my trips to Germany, I brought a hand crank juicer with just a pain in the ass. I'm going to recommend it. I didn't travel with any appliances over there. But what I did do once I got there is I went to this store called Aldi, or it's like an Aldi. Who knows what an Aldi is? It's like Aldi, but it's in Germany, and it's like the same thing. I'm by the same people probably, because that's kind of like the European model thing. And they have produce, so I bought some produce. But in the back of the store, they also sell some kitchen gadgets. So I, thought, I found one of those little, like, magic bullet tile style blenders for, like, 19.90 euros, about 20 bucks or whatever. And I bought it, and I was in Europe for a week. So I used that my whole trip. And, yeah, it was a little small blender, but at least I could blend stuff up and get better digestion than just chewing and save me some time. And then at the end of my trip, I could have just, like, just ditched it and left it. I've also, I've also done that sometimes with, like, little, like, cheap old dollar steak knives. Because it's really important to have a good sharp knife, and although I bring some knives with me, sometimes they're just not as sharp as I'd like, because you can't bring really sharp knives on the airplane. If you're not checking in, if you're checking in, it's not a problem, but I don't like to check these bags. So I, I, I use this blender. At the end, I could have just left it there, gave it to somebody, a friend or something, but I brought it back with me to the States. Once I got back to the States, I put it on eBay. It sold for more than I bought it for. Oh, so now I was eating healthier, and now I made like 10 bucks. So somebody else could take it to Europe and give it to their friends or use it when they're on their raw foods diet. I doubt that. So yeah, so that was fun. And then another thing that I could bring on a trip is a juicer. I talked about bringing a hand crank juicer. I brought the healthy juicer, which they advertise. You can juice anything in it, and it's pretty much good for juicing leafy greens. And I tried to juice carrots in it and oranges, just kind of backed up and made a mess. So I just... I won't even waste my time with just crap like that. Uh, let's see. You can also bring a full-size electric juicer, which I prefer to do because it'll keep me more on the program, eating more fruits and vegetables. Yesterday, I juiced like four pounds of carrots in there and some apples, and then I blended that in the blender with like five ounces of leafy greens. So that was like a hybrid juice, um, like green smoothie. <coughs> And I did that because my leafy greens, if I ran it through the juicer, wouldn't make that much, and plus I'm not in abundance in leafy greens at this point. <laughs> so it kind of stretches the food out. Another appliance that can be handy when traveling is a dehydrator, not to take with you, but to make some dehydrated foods before you leave. So not that I necessarily recommend this, you know, but if a dehydrate, if eating dehydrated foods is going to keep you from eating McDonald's candies or cookies and standard processed foods, it's a good thing, but if it's going to keep you from eating Fresh fruits and vegetables, it's a bad thing, right? And I, I sell dehydrators, so I want you guys to know that. So I always recommend eating your foods fresh whenever possible. Because I tell like it is, I tell you guys what I do, because I want you guys to do the best you can. And this is what I've learned the, about the best stuff I know how to do in 18 years now. So yeah. So let's, oh, let's talk about the cool stuff next. Let's talk about the gadgets you can bring to make traveling easier. So let's see here. We're going to open up the back of this uh, thing here. I got a whole bunch of cool stuff in here. I like to make green powders with my dehydrator. I'll take kale leaves when I have an abundance of them. I'll dehydrate them, then put them in the blender when it's dry, make it into a powder, and then powder that up and put it into a jar. And now I have like a whole bunch of kale in a jar that's dry, then I could just put that back in water and rehydrate it. Another thing you can do is bring things like green powder. So I like the vitamin oil green powder. You can just put some of that in the water that you get for free in the airplane and make like a little mini green drink that's going to alkalinize you. You have the probiotics and all kinds of good stuff in there. Uh, let's see, some of the, I think we're in the gadget section. Oh, one of the things, I, I put this in here for, for to share with you guys. So one of the things, you know, a lot of people do when they're raw and they're traveling, they're like, they default to package and, you know, uh, raw food products. Oh, I'm traveling, I just got to grab a whole bunch of this, you know, dehydrated stuff. What else do I have in here? Oh, yeah, these guys. You know, and I would highly encourage you guys not to do this. I encourage you guys to take the fresh fruits and vegetables instead. Why? These foods are going to dehydrate you. If you're not eating foods that are high water content, higher than your water content, which hopefully is 70 to 75%, it might be a bit lower if you're not eating high water content foods, 
uh, you know, you're going to have to drink more water. So eating these on the airplane, especially because they're salted, are going to pull your waters out of you and just flying in the airplane is already dehydrating enough. So on airplanes, actually, I recommend you guys take some fresh fruits, and we'll talk about that in a minute, or just drink water. You could fast. I mean, people go on, my dad went on a 30-day water fast. You guys could fast for two hours on a flight, a 12-hour flight, sleep half the time, there's four hours left, and it's a good cleanse. You can be like, yes, I'm going on a trip, I get to water fast this time again. Right? Come on. All right, so, yeah. Don't do the dehydrated foods. All right, so some of the gadgets you can take. This is a standard lettuce knife. I got this at the dollar store. You can find them sometimes, they don't often have them. But this lettuce knife, technically, according to TSA rules, although sometimes, you know, these government officials make up rules as they go, yeah. right? So I, that's the disclaimer. Technically, you should be able to take this lettuce knife. I've taken the lettuce knife successively, I'd probably say, like, 90% of the time. I do have that 10% of the time when I get that TSA guy, and it, it, so he takes my plastic knife away. Which sucks. That's got a blade, it's gonna cut somebody. Look, man, I'll cut my neck. I'll bleed it. Come on, man, give me a break. So you should be able to take these guys. Some other kind of tools you can take. Oh, this is my favorite knife. This is the knife that TSAs don't want you to know about. My butter knife. And yes, it's a Red Bull Hills farm that's a local goat dairy near me. But um, I got this for free at the trade show, so it's all right. <laughs> but this is a butter knife, and you know, it's not sharp, and the blade's really small. But guess what? I could take an apple. I mean, I've cut lettuce with this. I've cut apples with this. Who wants an apple? Hey, I'll cut it. <laughs> I want an apple. <laughs> Here, I'll cut an apple one more time. Look how easy this is to cut. <laughs> All right, yeah, I'll split this one in half. There's a sticker on here, so uh, be aware. But yeah, I mean, this thing will cut things. I've cut all kinds of stuff. I even cut a pineapple, although I don't necessarily recommend that. But yeah, I mean, one of these little butter knife things can come in really handy, even if you're not eating butter in your life, just for fruits. All right, hand that around. And... So yeah, don't forget your but number one tool that I must have every trip. It always goes in my special pocket in my backpack, so I have it available. Let's see, man, I'm totally running out of time. Another thing, oh, this one's another cool one. So I like to bring a plastic spoon, but this is not any plastic spoon. It cuts things. This is the plastic spoon from Mars. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's from Germany. Um, so this is a Lurk uh, plastic spoon, and what this has, this has a nice sharp blade on the edge. So sometimes when you're eating a melon with a, like a blunt spoon, you can't really dig in there, and it's like spraying juice everywhere. This gets in there nice and cuts. So these two items, I never leave home without them. Let's see, man, some other cool stuff. Oh, you can take these knives on the airplane, too. These, once again, this is a bamboo knife. Got this at the trade show. Earth Balance. Don't recommend you eating that crap either. But, um, yeah, you can take this easily. They also have, like, some cool bamboo wear you can take. Let's see. I want to show you guys. Oh, okay, here. These are my coolest utensils you can take on the airplane. So this is actually called a Light My Fire little spoon fork. So it's a spoon on this side. And has a fork on this side with a little edge there to cut stuff. Not too functional, but you know I like to have different things at hand to show for my demos. And I don't necessarily use this one. <laughs> Another thing that's really cool. I tell like it is. Another thing I got at the last Green Festival in San Francisco is this guy. So this is got guys like a spork or whatever you had them with kids in, in grade school. But it's made out of metal and it just bends forward, and so you could take this on the airplane. It has like little tongs and a spoon, and it's kind of sharp to get in to eat your melons. Folds in half, came with a nice pouch, oh, right here. It's actually called the uh, Life Without Plastic is the company that had this, so that's cool. I, like awesome. I try to encourage you guys to use real items instead of plastic whenever possible. This was a really super buy. I've never been able to found this next. Uh, it, again, this was actually at the dollar store, 99 only store. And check this out. This might look like a knife. And if you want to get stopped by the TSA, have one of these in your bag. Because <laughs> every time I have this, or 99% of the time, they'll stop me to see. So now I just take it out. Put it in front so they can see it because they will pick it up. Then I got to sterilize it from their dirty ass hands. <laughs> <laughs> so then, anyway, no, I'm serious. I mean, they touch all this crap, people's shoes. I'm not like putting this in my mouth, my organic mouth. So, <laughs> just open up a nice spoon on that side, nice fork on that side, but no knife. Because this gets them. People, you never see these things. And I don't know where I'm going to see that again. <laughs> Oh, Army Supply Store, thank you. Good hit. I didn't know that one. What did she say? Army Supply Store. 
So another thing that's very critical when traveling is to bring something you can't cut your food on because I'm not cutting it on the nasty desks at the hotels. <laughs> <laughs> Cutting board. So this is from a Japanese store, and I like this one because it has a little lip on it, so if there's any juices, it's not going to drip all over. That's a small one. Then I have one I got at the trade show. I got these two at the trade show for free. They're kind of used. And I like to bring multiple cutting boards. This has adds, you know, insignificant weight to your bag. If you brought like a wooden cutting board, which I have that also adds a lot more weight. So I could easily pack in, you know, just a whole bunch of these. This is a brand new one in the package. You could have a whole bunch of these and like, you know, just cutting like my lettuce on this, it's going to fall over the edge. So I want to just like cut on a big one and maybe even put two next to each other so everything's not falling anywhere. I'm cutting my lettuce on this one, then I'll have one for my avocados and have nice piles of food or whatever. So yeah, very important to bring cutting boards. Another cool thing that I haven't found since then is this guy. I also like to wash my produce, especially if I didn't grow it myself or, you know, it's questionable. I, I need a colander or something. And I need something that folds flat to fit in my bag. So this is actually called a flat fold colander. Bed, bath, and beyond. Oh, they sell these still, huh? Well, it's not exactly that style, but it is a fold flat colander. All right. So yeah, so this is a full flat colander. You know, if I'm washing things and it doesn't have a kitchen in there, I'll just put my lettuce in here and just like... <laughs> go in the bathtub and just wash my stuff in here, let it drain out and shake it out. Another cool thing, once you wash it, you can actually travel with something like this. John, will you bring a towel for your trip, man? No. This is actually called a salad sack. I got a lot of these cool gadgets. I'm a gadget guy. I used to have a donut maker before I was wrong. And a potato chip maker. It would actually cut the potatoes, fry it, and then put it out, and uh, scoop it out and put it on a napkin to absorb the oil. That's not healthy for you, right? <laughs> so this is called the salad sack. So once you wash your lettuce, you can put it in here, you zip this thing up, and then you spin. <laughs> Might look a little bit weird and I go out in front of hotels sometimes and do this. <laughs> but I'm getting my salad dry, damn it. I don't have any that fluorinated, chlorinated water on my food. <laughs> so yeah, so this thing's pretty cool. It's from a, can a company up in Canada, A. Eh? They're nice people. I like that a lot. All right, other gadgets, let's see what we got here. Oh yeah, don't forget your guys' sprout bag. So sprout bag can be very useful, you know, one trip I went to Cyprus, and uh, Cyprus is in the middle of the Mediterranean, they had some amazing citrus fruits that were like dirt cheap, and they're so good. But I wanted to juice them, because I just didn't want to eat all the citrus. So by just cutting this orange in half, putting it in here, and squeezing, you're going to squeeze all the liquid out, keep the seeds and all the, everything else in here, even if you don't have a citrus juicer with you. You can also sprout your seeds, bring seeds if you want to do sprouted seeds. You could also, you know, um, like blend and strain it out if you want to juice, although I don't recommend that either. Let's see, what else do I need to really go over? Spiral slicer. Sometimes I bring tools, like if I'm going to my brother's house or whatever, I'll bring tools like spiral slicers to make noodles so then I can make him something if I'm, you know, want to make something fancy because most people never had zucchini noodles or, you know, things like that. Uh, sometimes I bring, well, rarely I bring a small cooler. So my friend Kailash, who knows Kailash? Nobody? One person, cool, you're cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, from Puerto Rico. He spoke, he, he taught at Anna Wigmore Institute. I love the guy, he's Is awesome. He still there? No, he moved to Brazil now and he has, I think, maybe two kids. No. <laughs> yes, but he's a great guy. So he likes to travel with a little cooler with all his produce he's going to eat on the plane. And actually, this is a good segue. So he likes to eat his produce on the plane and just pack it in a cooler. And one of the cool things is that many people don't know is that the airlines will allow you the one carry-on, like the go overhead, one backpack, plus your food for the journey. Many people don't know that. And, and especially some of the TSAs and people that check you at the TSA line don't know that. So you have to, if you're going to do that, you better print out a thing in writing from the airlines and say, look, it says I can bring my carry-on, my backpack, and food for the trip. And this is my food for the trip. <clears throat> Doctor says I'm on a special diet. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Would you need to have a, a note from your doctor for that? Because I know that was I was wondering what you need to bring because they're going to be like, I don't know about that. No, you need to find out on the website of the airline. Also, it's by airline. Generally, they allow you that. There may be some airlines that don't. So I print something out, and you don't need a doctor's note. Yes. I've seen the spiralizer, the kind of your big machine. Right. Do you have another way of spiralizing? Absolutely. So um, this is outside the scope of the talk, but uh, this tool here is actually a Julian slicer that if you take a zucchini the long direction this way, and I wouldn't carry this one on, they might not let you take it, but if you do a zucchini the long way, it'll make you know this long as spaghetti strips. I have these available for $10. That's aside from the point. 
So anyway, so my friend Kailash likes to bring his food on the plane and eat it in the plane when he's, you know, on there. I prefer not to take my food on the plane. Why is this? Well, well germaphobe, that's one thing. Anybody else? Thank you, radiation. So the other thing is, you know, in the olden days, before 9-11, you could maybe say hand check, you know, my food. Nowadays, they're like, everything goes through the x-ray machine. Dude, I'm sorry. I do not eat irradiated food. I don't microwave my food. I don't buy irradiated tropical fruits like some dragon fruits, loquats, and Randy Tans imported from Hawaii and some other places. So if you shop at Asian markets getting um, tropical fruits, beware, they may be irradiated and they're not labeled. But I don't want to eat irradiated foods whether I do it purposely or whether I'm buying it. So that's why I don't like to generally eat on the flight. That being said, what I like to do is normally, like my drive to the airport in California is about a one hour drive. What I will do is I'll blend up a smoothie, a green smoothie, and then I'll drive in my car with this, driving, <laughs> top off. <laughs> and I'll drink my smoothie, and guess what? By the time I get to the airport, I'm freaking stuffed, and the other thing is I'm full of liquid, so I'm hydrated, and now my food did not have to go through the x-ray. Uh, bring green fat powders, I'll talk about that. I'll bring juicy fruits. Oh, this is really important. The one way you can smuggle on water onto the plane, because you know, TSA says you can't bring any liquids over three ounces. I've done this successfully every single time, bringing eight to 12 ounces of water on the plane. Pack a couple coconuts, because guess what? These are not water-filled water vessels. These are coconuts. Shut them in the airport first, right? Well, yeah, this, is, this came like this. You know, I've also opened coconuts with plastic knives and butter knives. I don't know, I haven't tried it with that little knife yet. But I could probably do it. But yeah, nonetheless, if you're going to travel with a young coconut, get it down to the point where you can stick a toothpick or a straw. And these ones, I mean, chopstick. These ones have, you know, every coconut has a little monkey face, uh, two eyes and a mouth. The eye holes are really hard. The mouth hole is really soft. So you can just take a chopstick, jab it through there. It'll make a hole, and then you stick straw in, drink it right out. That's very important to stay hydrated if you want. I mean, of course, other things you can bring. Another thing I like to do is oftentimes if they're not having the full, you know, uh, radiation scan, I'll just load up my back pocket. And don't do it in your front pocket because you'll walk through and like, what's in your pocket? Right? But if I do it in my back pocket, I'll have this back pocket like bulging out so much. And I have my shirt down and I'll just walk through and they're not looking at the back of me. Then my ass is like on all these things. <laughs> and then I walk through without getting my food radiated. But yeah, eat your food beforehand so you don't have to deal with it. So let's see. So man, I'm running before I run out of time here. Um, so ordering a meal on the airplanes. I mean, some airlines have fruit plates. I mean, I wouldn't even bother ordering the vegetarian. It's highly processed and crap. Um, foreign airlines, some of them actually have raw meals, which is also really rare. I just recommend you fast. Another thing you want to do is... Uh, you want to eat when you arrive. So once you get off the plane, get out of the airport, find the farmer's market, health food store, supermarket to load up on fresh produce. Uh, next tip area is about hotel stays. You want to stay in a sweet hotel. What I mean is places like Homestead, Candlewood Suites, Residence Inns. These places have like a bed, plus they have like a mini-sized kitchen, not a kitchenette. I mean, they got a full-size fridge. They provide you with all the bowls, and usually there's at least one larger bowl. All the stuff you'll need, including a dishwasher, many of them, so that you can make and prepare your food there, because that's truly the best way to travel, in my opinion. If you're traveling by car or boat, um, bring a thermal electric cooler to keep your food cool. That's very important, especially for your leafy greens. A lot of my different uh, fruits, you know, I just don't have under any refrigeration, and it's not really required around town. You know, you always have some utensils in your car so that you can eat. And I always encourage you guys to, once again, eat fresh fruits instead of dried fruits. We out of time? All right. So we're, so we're out of time. So I want to, um, let's see, I want to just give you, like, one more closing tip. So my last closing tip that I want to give you guys is, uh, is this stuff right here. This is actually called uh, Essential Formulas Dr. O'Hara's Probiotics 10 Plus. This is the one supplement that if I don't have anything else like green powders, I travel with this. This has saved my butt so many times from things like food poisoning. These are very powerful probiotics that are different strains than what's normally found. These are also uh, shelf stable that don't need to be refrigerated. And if you get if I even get a sign of food poisoning or my stomach's upset, just pop like four of these, and 
it's worked out itself it out all right. Can you say the name again? Yeah. Uh, Dr. O'Hara's probiotics uh, 10 plus. Oh, yeah, sure. O H H I R A S. Spell it again, please. I'm sorry. Dr. O'Hara's. O H H I R A S. It's not found in uh, most health food stores. Like one thing of 60 will cost you around 60 bucks. So they're not cheap, but you know, if it saves you from getting sick on your one week trip to Cyprus, it's worth it. Do what? Are they yes, they're veg caps. These are made in Japan, and it's actually it's a fermented whole food. If you have a little recipe book after 18 years on raw foods. I wrote a little recipe book about six years ago that I have for sale uh, for about five dollars. That'll teach you some of my simple and easy recipes that I didn't get into today in the next segment of this class. Thank you so much. I hope you guys enjoyed that video sharing my tips on how to travel raw. Hey, if you guys have some tips on how to travel raw. Put it up below in the video, I'd love to see it. If you like this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up and be sure to share it with all your friends. In addition, be sure to subscribe to my videos if you're not already subscribed for future content like this, this caliper that's gonna teach you guys the nuts and bolts of how to eat a raw foods diet and be successful at it in the long term. Once again, I've been doing this for 18 years and I'm here to share my tips and tricks with you guys so that you guys can do it too and we could all change the world. Once again, my name is John Kohler with OKRod.com. We'll see you next time. And remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're the best.